Hi everyone, welcome to this virtual camp. My name is Adrian Ferguson and I'm hosting the camp this week and we're very excited because this week we're going to learn about five senses and we're going to try and make sense of the five senses and today we're going to learn about listening. Well, I think we all need to learn a little bit about listening today. Well, just before I go out, hold on a second. That's the phone ringing. I wonder who it could be. It's my brother Peter. Hi Peter, how you doing? He wants me to go to the bowling green. Yeah Peter, and you'd like to go bowling? You see my brother, he speaks a lot on the phone and you just don't need to listen to everything he's saying. Yeah Peter, we'll see you up there in just 10 minutes. And um, he wants me to go bowling with him. You know, I know about bowling, it should be really easy. I'll see you up there in just a few minutes and we'll learn a little bit more at our virtual camp today. So come with me and we'll have a great time. Well, I got to the Bowling Green uh, on the invitation of my big brother here, Peter. And Peter, I've been uh, following your instructions for the bowling and I brought my football boots along. Adrian, you're not listening. Oh, well, is that my table tennis bat I have to bring? How many times do I need to tell you, Adrian, you're not listening? Oh, well, I've got my tennis racket for the... Adrian, I've told you before, you're not listening. Oh, I think I've got the impression from my brother that I've not been listening. And you see, boys and girls, when you listen to God's word, it makes a difference in your life. And we're going to learn a lot about that today. It's very important to use that sense of listening to hear the right things to do. Well, that was a pretty hard lesson for me to learn. I should have been listening to my big brother and following the instructions about what I should have done at the Bowling Green. I think we should listen to God because God speaks to us in wonderful ways. And this little song that we're going to sing now is called What a Beautiful Name It Is, the name of Jesus, because it's a lovely name and we should listen to him and enjoy the song and I'll come back to you after the song. I don't know if you've been watching the bowlers in the background, but I've noticed something about the bowls that they use, that every time they bowl it, it seems to go squint. I was wondering about that, and then I picked one up, and I realised inside it, it's got what's called a bias. And every time you bowl it, it goes squint, because it's heavier on one side than the other. It's called a bias. In our life, we have a bias towards sinful ways, and we seem to always go against God's thoughts and God's will and God's commandments. And boys and girls, we can't solve that problem for ourselves. We need the Lord Jesus to take away that bias of sin and forgive our sins. And we're going to learn a lot about that this week at the virtual camp. 
Well, Peter, thanks very much for teaching me that vital lesson about listening. And I've been listening to my wife, Audrey, and she's told me this little trick that we're going to try and do today. Uh -huh. Do you want to be the volunteer? I'm happy about that, yeah. Right, so Peter, you can be the volunteer. Now, all I need you to do is put this can on your head. Just okay. hold that there. That should be easy. Yeah, just hold that can there. Very easy. And uh, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to take this box of eggs, you can see here, and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm then going to take this egg here and I'm going to put this egg and crack it in the tin. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, right. Okay, none in your head so far? No, it's fine. Right, okay. Now, what I've got to do here, I've got the, this little piece of card here and um, what I'll do is I'll put that there and then I'll just turn this over here. And I think I've been listening to what Audrey told me to do. Uh, hold on a second. I think I've forgotten what she said. I can't remember what she said. Something about the instructions. I'll, see, I wasn't listening properly to the instructions. I'll just remove this. I think it's something to do with this. Removing this card here. Oh, it says, do not <laughs> remove. Oh, oh, oh Peter, I, I noticed you've got a nice clean shirt on tonight. So we'll, we'll have to remove this can oh. and we'll see, oh. see what's going to happen to you. Oh, it's an egg everywhere. Oh, Peter, look what's oh. happened. It's not egg at all. I've turned it into <laughs> some sweeties. Sweeties, sweeties so just what I need to keep my finger. Just Thanks, one, one for everyone in the bowling club tonight, Peter. Brilliant. And Wonderful. thank you for being such a happy victim tonight. So thank you. And now for our Bible verse today for you to remember at home. It's found in John's Gospel, chapter number 5, verse 24. Jesus said, He that hears my word and believes in him that sent me has everlasting life. Jesus said, He that hears my word and believes in him that sent me has everlasting life. Last time, John chapter number 5, verse 24, Jesus said, He that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. And your homework is to learn that for yourself and to let it burn into your heart that you might know the very word of God in your heart. Well, now it's time for our little Bible story and we're looking at John chapter number 11 today. And in John chapter number 11, it's a very exciting story and it's all about listening to the voice of God. Well, it was many years ago when the Lord Jesus was on this earth and he was way far away from Jerusalem. In fact, I think he was nearly two days away and he was doing wonderful things. He was healing, he was preaching, he was helping people. It was such a good time. But up in Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem, it wasn't such a good time because there was a man there called Lazarus and he was very sick. In fact, he was really at the point of death. And one of the servants, he made a huge effort. He ran as fast as he possibly could and he made all the way down to where the Lord was. And he says to the Lord, please come quickly. Lazarus, your friend, he's dying. Well, the Lord didn't seem to be in a hurry. In fact, he turns to his disciples and says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, there was no panic. We're gonna spend a little bit more time where we are. Well, after about two days, the Lord said, let's go and see Lazarus. Well, the Lord made the journey up the winding roads and up to where the Bethany was, the place called Bethany, and he got to where Lazarus was. But when he got there, it was a scene of great sadness. It was a devastating scene because Lazarus had died. Oh, and out of the house comes running Martha, the sister of Lazarus, and she comes right to the Lord and said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. But the Lord paused and he looked Martha in the eye and says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Do you believe this, Martha? Well, Martha says, I believe that we'll all come together alive again at the end of the world. But the Lord says, no, I'm able to make people alive now. People that will hear my voice and respond to me, I can make alive now. Well, in the house, there was another lady called Mary, and she was upset too. And the two sisters, they went to where the tomb was and the Lord, he looked at the crying Mary and the crying Martha and he was upset too because the Lord, he can sympathise. He's not hard-hearted. He loves us. He cares for us and he wants to be our friend. 
And that very day, the Lord paused and says to the people there, take away the stone from the tomb where Lazarus has buried. They were shocked. By now, Lazarus had been dead four days and they didn't want to see his body. It was all wrapped in bandages like a mummy. Oh, it would have been scary to see it. But the Lord says, no, roll away the stone. And the stone was rolled away. He paused and he cast his eyes up into heaven and he said a little prayer. Father, I know that you hear me at all times. And then he paused and he said with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And amazingly, a person who was dead heard the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he stood up and he walked and he came out of the tomb. Oh, it must have been very difficult. He was wrapped in these bandages. And the Lord says to the people round about, take away the bandages. And was Lazarus dead anymore? No, Lazarus was alive because he heard the voice of the Lord Jesus. Now, boys and girls, you can also hear the voice of the Lord Jesus. You know what he says? Come unto me. And he wants you to find rest and peace and salvation in him. And you can have your sins forgiven by knowing the Lord Jesus as your saviour. And I just encourage you to do that today by asking the Lord to save you. You might say, well, does he really love me? Yes, he loves you. He died for you. And he rose again for you and he wants to call you into his presence and Jesus Christ can be your saviour today if you'll hear his voice and respond to him. Now we've got time to speak to God in prayer and to give thanks for God for this beautiful day we've enjoyed together. Father, we give thanks for the Lord Jesus and for his wonderful power. We think how, Father, we should listen to him and hear his voice and believe in him and we just pray, Father, that boys and girls at this virtual camp would come to know the Lord Jesus. We give thanks in his most precious name. Amen. Well, we've had a great day at the virtual camp today. And we're going to close our camp with a theme song that we're going to sing every single day at the virtual camp. And it's called, I Go to the Rock. And so I'm going to leave you with this closing song and you can enjoy that song for yourself. God bless you.